The World Leather and Leatherbiz team are delighted to be collaborating with APLF by providing content for their Academy Week. Back in 2009, the team launched a new global awards programme for the tanning industry titled Tannery of the Year. The idea was that we would celebrate best practice in the industry, particularly around corporate social responsibility and give tan tanners a platform to tell their stories. We are very grateful to our sponsor Buckman and to the International Council of Tanners and the International Union of Leather Technologists and Chemist Societies for their continued support. We had no idea at the time the prestige and recognition the award would bring to those tanneries who won. Today we will hear presentations from three of the winners and then they join World Leather's editor Stephen Tierney for a most informative roundtable discussion. Representing the first winners of the award are Reg Hankey and Tisendia Mekbib from Pittards, Ethiopia. Our 2014 winners, Andreas Kinderman from Walsdorf Leder in Austria, and our most recent winner, Chris Tum On Sakun Wong from Interhides in Thailand. I sincerely hope you enjoy the next hour or so. Hello everybody, my name is Reg Hankey. I'm speaking to you from Pittards here in the UK. Pittards has a very long history. It celebrates 200 years in 2026. One of our uh, consumer brands, Danes and Hathaway, is 100 years old next year. And our tannery in Ethiopia, Pittards Ethiopia Tannery, is 50 years old in a couple of years' time. So our company has a very long heritage and a very proud history. Our sustainable business model is all based around having long-term strategy. That is the key to building a business that will last the fullness of time. And that embraces all of our stakeholders. So whether that is our investors, our customers, our suppliers, our people, or the communities in which we operate, every decision we make has a long-term nature to it. We don't do anything for short term. With that in mind, when you look across to Ethiopia, we decided to invest in Ethiopia back in 2005. And we had been operating and buying skins from Ethiopia for about 100 years up to that point. Since then, we've invested strongly and we now have five factories there. The tannery together with four other finished product manufacturing sites. When one considers sustainability, which is a very, very important topic these days, if you use the simple uh, definition of considering people, our planet, and a profitable business, then our work in Ethiopia allows us to vertically integrate, use material from the country, process it through our own tannery, through our own finished product factories, and deliver it once to our customers, which is exactly where we want to be for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So with that in mind, I'll hand across to Sedenia Mekbib, who is our Managing Director of Everything We Do in Ethiopia, to explain to you more about the detail of what happens there. Hi everyone, this is Sedenia Mekbib, and I am the Managing Director of Pitarts Ethiopia. In 2009, Pit Arts Ethiopia was the first winner of Tannery of the Year Award. And this recognition was extremely important to Ethiopia, our shareholders, staff and employees. Although Ethiopia had a long history in leather tanning, the award was a testimony to the country's potential to be one of the best in the global leather industry. In addition, it announced our commitment to innovation and clean tanning while offering high-end and beautiful leather products. So, if we ask the question, why Ethiopia is important in the world of leather, there are so many reasons, but I'd like to focus on two fundamental points. Number one, Ethiopia is home to the largest cattle population in Africa. The landscape and climate of the country offers organic, extraordinary 
and beautiful skins and hides from the meat industry. This is an ideal and unique opportunity to source raw material that is suitable for the manufacture of premium finished leather goods. The second reason is Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa with 114 million people, 50% are between the ages of 15 and 55. So this provides a large pool of trainable workforce. So back in 2008, our operation in Ethiopia started with a tannery and over the years, we established five finished goods manufacturing factories. Currently, we produce industrial and fashion gloves, leather garments and goods, and in recent years, added high quality hand-sewn footwear to our range of product portfolio. This has created opportunities and skill development to the local workforce. In addition, our goal is to process as much as possible in country and ship finished goods to reduce our manufacturing carbon footprint. Pittard's uh, PLC was established in 1826, which is almost 200 years ago, and has a track record in doing the right thing. We've always been part of the community, look after the environment we operate in, work closely with our employees, and build a strong linkage in the supply chain. For example, 3,000 trees, which consists of avocados, coffee, and mangoes were planted at the tannery 13 years ago by our employees. And in 2019, additional 7,500 trees were planted at our site in Ethiopia. This shows our commitment to maintain the quality of our natural surroundings. On this slide, what you see is a Jersa school located near the tannery. We had built new classrooms every year to accommodate more students. Even during the pandemic, our commitment continued and we added three classrooms recently. Over the years, we've also upgraded the existing facility to include a library and this is in addition to continuous supply of equipment and up-to-date books. Similarly, Pitarts is committed to helping underprivileged children and youth through a charity known as Brave Hearts. In addition to a holistic support, the most important aspect for us is to encourage and support the youth to become independent through quality education. So, we collaborate with Brave Hearts in the journey and also offer job opportunities to graduates. In our industry, promoting best practice in the supply chain plays an important role to sustainability. So our farm project focuses on improving standards of animal husbandry, and this is our long-term commitment. What you see here is under 80 local football teams sponsored by us. This program began three years ago to promote a healthy lifestyle and encourage young boys to be successful and inspiration to others. Our team did extremely well and won cups for the last consecutive years without a fail and has recently been stepped up to Ethiopian Football League. We are very keen to see these guys succeed in their journey. At Pittards, we value integrity and transparent business practice. Uh, compliance to high industry standard is an important element of our business and we frequently undergo independent operational and financial audit. Pitards Ethiopia is predominantly run by Ethiopian management with um, strong UK training links. And we're very proud of our tax compliance award for the last two years running. So in the last 13 years, we've had an exciting journey that included various challenges, which was a learning curve for us, to a massive opportunity for growth and expansion. Since 2008, we've set up a world-class tannery and became vertically integrated to include the manufacturing of work gloves, dress gloves, footwear, and various leather garments and goods. Through this fantastic journey, we've managed to develop versatile workforce with a skill set that continues to evolve in an ever-changing global market demands.
Here is a short video illustrating our journey. Thank you very much, and now I'd like to hand back to Reg. Thank you, Sidenia, for that contribution. Um, on top of receiving the Tannery of the Year Award back in 2010, we were further recognised in 2018 in the House of Lords in, in London with a first award for responsible capitalism. This award recognised our commitment to sustainability and corporate and social responsibility and we're very, very proud to be recognised in this way by two prestigious organisations. In summary, uh, our business revolves around long-term strategy and the very simple guiding principle of when faced with any business decision, do the right thing, make the right decision. And we all know in our hearts what those decisions need to be, whether that's with our people, our community, our customers, or our suppliers, or our investors. So with that simple philosophy, we believe we have a long-term strategy that works for our business. With that in mind, we are always hungry to develop new relationships with new customers. So please, if there are any customers out there who share the same values as us, and wish to build a long-term relationship with us, please get in touch. We're ready and willing to, to hear your request. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome you um, with my presentation about Worlds of Leather. Um, I've been asked to um, give you an overview uh, about Wolfsdorf and uh, our activities uh, to succeed in the current leather environment. Um, my name is Andreas Kindermann. I'm the CEO of Wolfsdorf. Wolfsdorf is um, a group of um, production companies. We are based in Austria. Our headquarter here is in Styria. We are here for since 1976. We have uh, in Austria the leather factory and um, have um, 10 years ago started with a small cutting location in China, um, producing cut parts for the uh, Chinese market. Um, we have uh, added a lo production location, a cutting location in uh, Croatia, Varashtin, about five years ago. We are producing their cut parts uh, for Europe, um, mainly for the automotive market, uh, steering wheel products especially. And our last but not least production location in Mexico is a leather and cutting location. We have started with leather production about two years ago and uh, just in 2020 um, with the cutting location. Um, overall, Wolfsdorf has approximately 1,400 employees. 
um, approximately 130 million turnover and we are producing at the moment about 24,000 hides per week. Our customers are mainly in the automotive market. Uh, we are uh, uh, within the automotive market, especially in steering wheel, airbag covers, uh, one of the market uh, leaders uh, globally. And in addition to automotive, we're also producing for furniture and aircraft. Um, we have been uh, awarded the um, Tannery of the Year Global Award in 2014. And I'm more than happy to share some thoughts about uh, what is critical for success. And the first um, and the three points I actually want to talk about is efficiency. The second one is innovation and the third one is uh, social responsibility, environment and uh, all activities to make sure that uh, we do not um, harm our environment and pollute our environment. So when I talk about the efficiency, um, the first point is um, very easy. We buy weight and sell areas. So I think we, you all know that. And um, the important thing is in this process, to really understand the value chain. Um, we have so many different processes and the relationship between those processes is important to understand. Uh, we have machine parameters, machine settings, parameters uh, in the production. We have different chemistry. Um, we have the environment, we have the humidity, the temperature during uh, the drying process. Um, we have the raw material, um, for example, the height when it's changing the fur from winter to summer fur, the fiber structure is changing. So everything in this value chain uh, has an impact on the final product and the relationship between these variables uh, is important to understand. Um, so the def definition of these processes um, and also a clear guidance of what should be the process is important. Uh, what we in Wolstorff do in this case, what is very special is that we clearly define what is the variable for each individual product. We follow the machine parameters. We um, uh, record the machine parameters. We make sure that every deviation is understood from the raw material to the finished product to understand what is the impact. Uh, the second thing is any change of these variables must be documented and before we change it, it's not only that it should be a good opinion, but the impact must be proven by statistics. So we run trials, we look at the statistic, and if there is an evidence of an improvement, then we make the change, not just because we think and it sounds good. The second point is um, we buy waste and sell a technical product. Um, and actually it's not real waste, it's a byproduct of the diary and food industry. But if you talk to a raw material trader about quality specifications, there is almost no discussion and agreement of what kind of quality we receive. We buy the height when it comes from the slaughterhouse. We do have a certain expectation um, due to the breed, due to the weight, uh, due to the region from the slaughterhouse. But on the other side, we sell the leather in the automotive industry, for example, to a customer where we have hundreds of page, pages with technical specification. So the transition from 
a raw material which is actually a byproduct with a incomplete quality definition to a product with a long range of quality definitions is a process which is really difficult. And the important thing is in this whole process with so many process steps is important to have quality definitions. So uh, we have a first quality grade, which is the raw material assessment. The second one is the wet white, the crust, the finished leather and the cut part. So and in between we have quality grades which are recorded. Uh, how are deviations? So it's that's and that's uh, leading us to understand which processes um, have which impact and um, as early as possible um, identify deviations and take the material out. It makes no sense to produce a finished automotive ladder and then at the very end realize that it does not fit the specifications. So if I, for example, would um, identify that the wet white is not perfect for an automotive, I don't know, airbag ladder, but it would fit for a embossed seating ladder. I can reallocate the, the, the transfer and then just avoid processes which are unnecessary. So in the quality process or the, or the, the, the definition and the assessment of the quality is really important. Um, this allows us to make sure that what we buy is according to the customer specifications in the most efficient way and as often as possible. We do not want to have out of the 14,000 heights just 10% which are good, but we must have 100% that are okay. And this is something um, we are working on with clear definitions and clear deviation analysis. This is the first point. Um, the second point uh, what I want to talk about is innovation. Um, and leather actually is a material that is thousand years old, uh, but uh, the material is still different to all other um, uh, competing materials that we have at the moment. Uh, plastic uh, does have certain technical capabilities, but it doesn't have the haptic feeling. Um, um, and other materials uh, do not achieve the specifications of leather. So leather is one of the few materials that is unbelievable in its combination. And this is something we continue with innovations and um, innovations in the area of process innovations, um, chemistry innovations. Um, in this area, I would say especially bio-based chemistry is a topic which um, I believe is a requirement for the future. The second area is um, ap new applications. When we look at leather, it's always or it's usually considered only as a covering material. It covers my skin, it covers the seat cover, um, but leather can be much more than that. And um, Wolfsdorf has been in the past years been looking and working on a lot of different innovations. Um, I give you some examples. Um, more than seven years, eight years ago, we have introduced in the aircraft industry a lightweight leather with a weight of um, uh, 500 grams per square meter with the same uh, technical specifications, tear resistance, elongation, like a normal leather. We have introduced uh, already two years ago um, an antibacterial leather, uh, which is now even last year was a big discussion with the COVID crisis. Um, so um, th this is a completely new surface. We have just recently integrated in the leather um, a new functionality which 
um, em emits an infrared light that is triggered by the body heat, which um, increases your vulnerable um, uh, your um, um, uh, uh, blood pressure and you're um, uh, much more creative. Um, um, we have um, integrated, um, for example, heat function and sensors and even switches in the, the finishing layer of uh, a leather. So uh, these are combinations in the application of leather and uh, that takes leather to the next level where it is not only a covering, covering material but much more than that. And I think in this area um, we also have to look at um, other materials like fabric. There is a lot of development going on there as well and we do not re need to reinvent the wheel. We can take over a lot of innovations and integrate them in leather as well to make sure uh, that leather is also a, a material for the next future. In automotive, for example, um, self-driving cars uh, need sensors in the steering wheel uh, and this is something uh, which we can provide with our leather. Um, uh, heating with uh, electric driven cars uh, is something where you have to uh, save the battery as much as possible. So uh, a very efficient heating system in cars um, are very important uh, in the future and with the heating possibilities that we offer um, electric cars uh, can have a more efficient heating system. So this kind of uh, new applications are something that helps leather to be the material of the future as well. The next and I think most important part is um, corporate social responsibility. Um, leather is actually an upcycling, upcycling material which is uh, something which would actually fit perfect in uh, the current trend, what people are thinking. Um, the uh, current generations do question the old way of doing business, the old way of living and young generations, Fridays for Future generation, uh, they want new solutions and leather is, although it's an old material, it's a perfect example of upcycling. Uh, so if we are able to pass on this message and to do our homework, then we can make sure that leather is something also for the future. And um, that's why we also need to work on to make sure that our homework is no emissions, no water usage, no CO2 and and and. This sounds impossible, but there are a lot of possibilities to work on this. Um, I have, for example, we have introduced long time ago, um, I've been speaking about innovations, new chemistry. Every chemistry that goes into our R&D department before we make any trial has to be approved by our environmental department. So before we look at what is the application, the function in the ladder, we look about what is the impact on the environment. And if we are convinced that the chemistry has no negative impact to the environment, then R&D is allowed to work with this chemistry in the ladder production. So the first point is for us the environment. Our um, wastewater treatment plant is not something that just deals with the water that comes out of the production. But if we have a problem in the wastewater treatment plant and sometimes this happens, we stop the production to make sure that no dip of water that is not cleaned account according to our uh, specifications and obligations is leaving our company in a perfect treated way. So this kind of 
environment first is something which is part of our way how we do the business and let's make sure that, um, that we follow that. Um, in addition, we have been working on reducing the water, for example. There are many possibilities in the liming and uh, in, the, in the dyeing process um, to reduce the water. In addition to make sure that no um, chemistry that is harmful is used in our uh, tanneries, uh, we are working on emission reductions, um, like a significant reduction of uh, water um, in the uh, in all process steps, uh, liming, uh, dyeing, and other process steps. Um, we are also working on reducing um, emissions like odor. Uh, a tannery um, usually has uh, has some emissions of odor as well. And um, in the tannery in Austria, for example, we have been um, uh, implementing a lot of actions to make sure that no odor is reduced. Um, we have, uh, in addition, um, made a lot of steps uh, to, re uh, to uh, reduce our CO2 footprint. Um, we are only using uh, electricity from uh, renewable sources. So only wind um, and water um, is used as um, uh, for production of our electricity. We have reduced the, the usage of electricity in a lot of processes by making sure, for example, that the drying process is more efficient by com implementing completely new processes. So it's a lot of different steps that have been introduced. And finally, uh, by also um, working on other projects, um, um, uh, implementing uh, and supporting, uh, for example, rainforests, uh, with the credit that we received, uh, the low CO2 emission that we had became balanced out and our factory in Austria became CO2 neutral. So a lot of these things are important and that's the basis for um, uh, uh, leather being uh, uh, a trendy and successful material. Uh, the tenor of the year initiative, I think is a good initiative to make sure that the benchmark companies are put uh, on, on, that, on the table, uh, but uh, in addition, we should not be afraid of making sure that those companies that do not follow the guidelines, that do not uh, fulfill all our requirements are also addressed and we must make sure that those black sheep improve as well to make sure that leather is the material for the future. Thank you. Thank you for joining the webinar. So. My name is Chris. I'm the representative from Interheights Public Company Limited. We're based in Samutprakan, Thailand. So we were the winner of 2018 Tannery of the Year. So today I want to give a brief history of the company. Uh, next slide, please. So we were established in 1988 from my grandfather. So currently my father is the CEO and I'm the third generation. We entered the stock exchange in Thailand in 2005. Currently we have 10 factories, but we are planning to increase that to 11 in the near future. We employ more than 1200 workers from our tannery up until our cutting and sewing facility. And as you know, we won the tenor of the year in 2018. And our main business is OEM leather for Japanese OEM. So customers such as Toyota, Honda, and Nissan for more than 20 years. Next slide. So what, what is the meaning of IHL or Interheights? So I would say there's three words that comes into our core. So what we define our I is integrity. So we have our integrity to our customer, to our shareholders, to our stakeholders, and to everyone. Then the H stands for honesty. That is our honest experience and our honesty towards our customer and our stakeholders. We stick to this so that we don't 
tell our customer anything that is not true. And we always tell them the reality and what is possible and what is not possible. And lastly, loyalty is where we stand within our family. So that means our staff, our workers, our customers, and our shareholders. So this is the true meaning of IHL. It is not a profit first business. It is run so that we can be a sustainable business and will last for generations to come. And next slide. So since winning the award in 2018, we've done many things. So the first project is that we install our first solar farm in our main tannery, which reduced our electricity cost by around 30%. And when, when the time comes that battery is efficient and more economical, that we can store our own electricity, we have enough space to generate the electricity for all the facility in our tannery. We also have our protein recovery from shaving dust technology, which has won the innovation awards also in 2018. So with that project, it's still ongoing. We are now expanded so that we are receiving a lot more shaving dust from all the tanneries in the country free of charge. They, they just deliver the shaving dust to our site. We treat them and then we recover the chrome. And lastly is a new project from our business for this year, which we think is very positive and a high impact project is that during the COVID pandemic, we try to help as many people as we can, even though we, we ourselves is a little bit on the struggling side with our business, but as a whole, we're still doing fine. So we thought that by helping the economy here will also help us in the long run. So we have started a new program where we go out and source more local hides in Thailand and the neighboring country, which has got hit a lot by the COVID pandemic. So prices drop a lot. We have step in and then hold the price steady, give them a sustainable income to all the collectors and also the farmers who who raise these cattle for not just for for hides, but they raise them for their meat meat selling and also for their farms. So we are helping all the farmers here in Thailand to be able to sustain and be able to to continue their livelihood. And we think that this this is a project that we'll, we're going to keep on going and moving forward. We'll try to expand this as, as much as possible. So if you ask me where does all those hides go? Of course, these hides are not like the hides we buy from professional slaughterhouse. These are going to come with machine flay or some with knife bands or knife cuts, but it comes with a value. So we try to find a house for them or product for them. So we have also started dog shoe business so that low grade hides can be used. This is so that we can keep on buying all the hides from everyone. So this is a short explanation of who we are. And I think that to become a great tannery, it's not just looking at yourself, but also look at the opponents, your competitor, your customer, and also your local community. And that, that can help you a lot. Thank you. Enjoy the seminar. Well, hello everyone. It's a great pleasure to be with you. I'm Stephen Tierney, editor of World Leather, and it's my privilege to moderate what I think will be a very interesting discussion. Our conversation today is with three leather manufacturing companies that are among the past winners of the Global Tannery of the Year Award. And as a reminder to everyone listening to us today, Tannery of the Year is an awards program that World Leather Magazine began working on in 2009 to give recognition to leather manufacturers who are committed to innovation, to environmental excellence, to strong partnerships, and to corporate social responsibility. So far, we have been able to host six grand finals, four in Hong Kong and two in Shanghai, 
with our partners at APLF. We have with us today Pittards, represented by Chief Executive Reg Hankey, by the Managing Director of Pittards Ethiopia, Sedenia McBeeb, and by the former Director of the Tannery there, John Moriarty. Hello to all three of you. We also have Wallsdorf Leather with Chief Executive Andreas Kinderman taking part today. Hello, Andreas. And we also have Interheights with General Manager Chris Tumamsakumwong joining us. Hello, Chris. And thank you to all of you for taking part. Time is fairly short, so let's go straight into the discussion. First, I want to ask each of the companies to sum up the most important changes that have taken place in your organisations since you won the Global Award at Tannery of the Year. I think uh, the best thing would be to go in chronological order. So starting with you, Sidenia and Reg and John, because the Pitards Tannery at Ejasa in Ethiopia was our first global winner in 2011. Then you, Andreas, because Walsdorf Leather was our global winner in 2014. And then you, Chris, because IHL won the award in 2018. So, Reg, Sidenia, and John, please talk us through the most important changes that have taken place at the tannery in Ethiopia in recent years. Uh, I think. Um... Good morning, everybody. But I think there are two or three ways of answering the question. The, the first one, the simple one, is to say, in many ways, as a 200-year-old company in 2026, we carried on the same as we were before, because why wouldn't we? Because that's what the core values are all about. Um, but I think, you know, to be more specific, when we won Tannery of the Year Award, the effect and the impact upon the recognition for Africa and the recognition for Ethiopia and the recognition for our company in Ethiopia was massive. Because up to that stage, you know, Africa was not really considered to be a major player in the global leather industry. So it was a very, very significant turning point for the continent and the country as a whole. Um, what we've seen then is a lot more investors coming to Ethiopia. Chinese investors in particular, Indian investors, some Europeans, and more local investors. So it was very significant in validating the country as a place to come for the future of our industry. So a big tick in the box for Tannery of the Year. Hmm. For us in particular, what we've done in, the, in these years in between is we have now vertically integrated our business far more. So we have the Tannery and we also now have four factories in Addis that right. make work, work gloves, dress gloves, uh, leather goods, garments, and more recently, shoes. Now, the tannery was the tannery, and the factories were the factories, but now they are one division under Sedenia, uh, who leads the whole operation for us in Ethiopia. So the whole move to vertical integration, effectively responsible manufacturing for the complete supply chain in one country, is what we've moved on to do. We're always looking for new customers that understand what we're trying to achieve and work with us. And I think the other thing, just to finalize from my side, is that in 2018, in the House of Lords, we were awarded what's known as the first award for responsible capitalism for our work in Ethiopia. And it's a very interesting mix on words, responsible capitalism. So, you know, people think that doesn't apply. But if you think about all our core values, and if you think about the word sustainability these days, it's mm -hmm. a very appropriate term for what we're trying to do as a business. But Sidenia, do you want to add any more to that? Uh, Reg, I think you've pretty much um, covered most of the points, but um, uh, the fact that um, the tannery and uh, leather goods manufacturing units have been set up in Ethiopia, has given an opportunity for us to indicate the ability of the workforce and the skill set um, in the country. So that's been an amazing opportunity um, since um, Pitars invested in Ethiopia. Super. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, maybe just one final comment from John then, Reg, on this, because, you know, John, you, you had many years of working there, and I think that um, the, the workers in Ethiopia, the people in Ethiopia, the community that you shared the resources with came to mean a great deal to you. Is that correct? Oh, it is. Uh, um, it was a, a fantastic period for me in, in my life, to be honest. Um, and it was a great privilege to have worked with the people there because, quite honestly, um, we worked honestly and openly with them. And the response we got in terms of support in every way was incredible. And um, it was a very sad day when I was forced to, to leave on health grounds. Um, but I also feel we were very strong in how we treated people equally in every respect. And um, and it's tremendous the way Lady uh, uh, Sedenia, as um, one of the first ladies in senior positions in, in Ethiopia, has has yeah. managed to retain the, the, the trust, the goodwill, and yeah. the respect of all the employees working in the business, and expand the business as well to the, as Reg said, up to manufacturing operations of gloves, leather, bags, garments, and such. Wonderful. Sidinia is the other the fact are the, all the factories in Addis Ababa. Uh, the Finnish leather goods manufacturing units are in Addis. That's including um, dress glove, work glove, and recently footwear. The tannery is based in Ijersa, which is 60 kilometers um, from Addis. Okay, thank you very much. All right then. Well, th thanks um, to Pitouts for that complete answer. Now we'll go to Andreas, so just a reminder, Andreas, just to ask you to sum up changes that have taken place mm -hmm. in your company since uh, winning the Global Tannery of the Year Award, in your case, in 2014. Good morning or good afternoon from my side also. Um, the changes that or um, uh, improvements or um, uh, developments that we have faced in, in Wolstow is that um, our company, when in 2014 we received the award, uh, we had a global customer base. Um, you know, we are uh, very strong in automotive um, and our customers are distributed all over the world. We have uh, a good market share in, in steering wheel leather. And in 2014, we uh, had just uh, two years prior to that started with the new ten uh, at the new cutting location in China, but we had a still strong uh, um, uh, workforce in in Austria, and in the last year since 2014 we have started and added a new factory in uh, Croatia, a cutting location, and um, just recently added a new tannery and cutting location in in Mexico. So, uh, Wolfsdorf was moving from an Austrian focused but global customer base to a global also fo um, a footprint company. So, our uh, production footprint has changed from very much uh, Austrian focused to a global one. And this is also um, I would say the internal whole group structure has changed in a way that our company need to be set up in a way to handle all these different types of production facilities, locations, um, different cultures, um, Mexico, China, different time zones. So this was quite um, one challenge. And by setting up these different locations, just make sure that the processes that are set up and um, for which we have received the Tenor of the Year Award are copied mm -hmm. to all the other locations because we still believe that Wolfsdorf is a very high innovative and very high quality oriented company. So in all our new factories, it was important to make sure that our processes there are best in class and our quality is at least as good as in Austria. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a big challenge. Um, so quality and process control 
um, imp was implemented in all the factories to make sure that we clearly and open understand how is the development in each of the factories. So this was a change of little bit change of mind, a lot of Austrians, and now we are a group of international people in our companies. And this was probably the biggest change that we had in the last couple of years. Wonderful. Thanks, Andreas. Chris, uh, Interheiz IHL success was more recent. It was in 2018, but I think you've been busy there as well, haven't you, in recent years? So what would you say are the major changes that have happened at the company since then? Uh, thank you very much for, for having us as one of the representatives. So it's been, I'd say, three years since the award. So since then, we have had a lot of responsibility in the local industry. So since we winning the awards, it bring a lot of exposure to the other tanneries in Thailand also. So we have to keep up, keep up our standards also due to that. So from 2018 to now, we've had a lot of improvements. So we've installed our first solar farm for the tannery base. Um, we've established a new tannery number 10 to our fleet of factories. We've also started to do other business to support the local industry. So one of the challenge in Thailand is that we have a huge meat industry, the local meat industry in Thailand. So with a lot of slaughtering of cows comes a lot of hides. Mm -hmm. So most of the hides are not up to standards to, to be used in say, shoe leather, automotive leather, or upholstery. So we have spent more than, I think, over a year to improve the quality of skinning the cows and steers, and also finding a place for them. So we've established a dog shoe business section in our company to be able to utilize the lower grades of the hides. Because we cannot select, we have to help the whole economy out because we are one of the biggest buyer in, in Thailand. So mm -hmm. if we don't buy, they cannot export because the quality is not good enough. So that's that's probably the biggest thing that we've done to, to help out the economy because winning the award comes a lot of responsibility also that, okay, now a lot of people know us and we have to keep up our work and, and also keep up our standards and also help the economy to grow also. Okay. And are those, is that footwear for sale, Chris, or is it footwear that you are giving to your workers or what, what is uh, it? We do footwear safety shoes for our workers and also for some of our customers and suppliers. Uh, the lower end of the height goes to dog shoes. Mm -hmm. So for pet boots and all those stuff. So we've just dog established dog that. Shoes. So Sorry, dog shoes. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Excellent. Okay, um, let's move on. The next question is to ask, in your opinion, about the most important developments that have taken place or have affected the wider leather industry in recent years. Andreas, you go first this time, please. So just, just say what you've observed. Okay, I think the, the biggest trend that we face at the moment is uh, the focus on environment, uh, Fridays for Future development. Um, young generations uh, do expect a change uh, in the industry and in the focus. And this is also something that has an impact to the leather industry because the leather industry is actually a perfect example for upcycling. Mm -hmm. But we have been not able to pass this message on yet. So I think this shows that we have to constantly uh, work on what leather really is, that leather is a perfect example of upcycling, and this meets the expectations of the younger generations. We have to work on um, uh, chemistry and other things to improve our standards. Uh, that's an ongoing process, but um, I, I think the, the, that trend uh, looking at the economy uh, and uh, looking at ecology 
um, is something uh, where the, meat, uh, the, the, the leather industry just has a perfect product to meet. Okay, excellent. Chris, what's your view of that? So I, I agree that environment is, is one of the key, key points that when we talk to our customer, which is the brands or sofa manufacturer or OEMs, environment is their number one factor. But in, in our views, yes, environment is one, but how, how do we make it better? So it comes with development for understanding, not development of the product, but development of understanding what is leather. So a hide has scars, has cuts. Has it's a made. natural product. It's a natural product, yes. So can the consumer accept those parts because if they can accept those parts, then we reduce scraps, mm. correct? And then it creates a difference between genuine leather and synthetic leather. Because mm -hmm. in the past, I would say five years, we've seen a lot of development on the request from the customer side to make leather more, how say, similar to synthetic products. So smooth, yes. flatten out, no damage at all. So, so that is one of the challenge we are we are facing, and and we are leading the conversation with most of our customer to to understand what is leather, and also to accept the fact that okay, there is heavy metal, there is an alternative of chrome free, but mm -hmm. when we go to the alternative, of course, physical testing and everything will drop. So we have to under again, explain to our customer what is the, the benefit. Yes, we can go full chrome free, very environmental leather, but you have to give, it's a give and take. So yes. if you want chrome free, there are some physical properties that will have to drop down. Yes. So, so I think that is probably the biggest challenge right now is to have our customer understand what leather truly is. Yes, and to have an honest conversation and yes. to make sure that everybody is um, speaking clearly and, and and telling the truth. Yes, so it's not like, okay, we want chrome free and then we want waterproof and also we want metal free. It's a little yeah. bit impossible to do without metal. So yeah, we can do it with no chrome, but we cannot achieve the same standard as a chrome leather waterproof. But can you accept it if you want to go environmental? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And what would the Pitard's answer be then to this question about recent developments in the wider industry? I, I think there's two or three really. I mean, aside from obviously coronavirus year and global recessionary pressures and whatever, uh, I think the biggest impact we've all been living with is the development of social media in recent years and the instant communication that comes with it. So what happens for an old industry such as ours is there is an immediate wider global audience which is judging everything you do. And they're judging it based on snippets of information that may be valid or they may not be valid. Mm. But no time to, to debate them or make them valid, the judgment's made. And we as an industry haven't responded quick enough to this new world of fast communication. So that has brought some of the challenges we've been talking about uh, from the other two guys. I would sum it up into the challenges come around sustainability is the big word. But what do you mean by that is another big topic. Um, but also innovation and e efficiency. And if you put those three together, that's where we need to work and respond more quickly to the global audience because we're, we're an international global industry. Um, okay, thanks. The last question I jotted down because unfortunately time is so tight is to say that you have all won the Global Tannery of the Year Award because you are leaders, which means you care about sustainability as we've just been discussed and you care about innovation. And as leaders, I wonder if you could pick one new idea that you would like the global leather industry to adopt in the coming years? 
what would you like that that one big idea to be? What would you most like to see happen in the near future, Chris? Um, you say for the whole industry, it would be probably yeah. ad adapt to a more global standards in terms of understanding what what is leather. Of course, we have say Sartre grading. Yeah. We have Sartre grading, but is all hides gonna fit in Sartre grading? And that that's gonna create a lot of problems for not just the tannery, but also the one who raised the cows. Yeah. So if we can come to a more close understanding between the people who raise the cows and the end consumer, then I think it will benefit everybody. Because what we see in the local industry here, not just in Thailand, but also our neighboring countries that, yes, they have a meat industry, but the hides are either sold off very cheap because it's in, in our terms, damage, or just put in the ground and, and landfill. And that's, that's just bad. So I always say that we are the one who collects garbage and turn into gold. Yeah. So hides are not, cows are not killed for their hides. Cows are killed for their meat. So we are the ones who take the leftover and make into something good. Yeah. So, to make it more sustainable, I think if we as a group, as a whole group, can educate the, the people why there are some damage to the highs, why are each shoes not the same because of the way we tan the leather, and I think that would be beneficial for everybody because the more we want it to be uniform, the more chemicals we put in, then the more harms to the environment. The less chemical we put in, the more natural the product is, but the more inconsistency there is. So if you can educate and find the middle ground, yeah. I think in the future we'll have a more stable price and also a better environmental impact from our industry also. Good. I hope you're I hope you're right, Chris. And I hope that we do have that appreciation of how beautiful the the, the true product is in spite of the scars, in spite of the blemishes because of its naturalness. Um, from a Pitard's point of view, then Sidenia, Reg, John, what is the thing that we that we most need to see come in? I think for me, and then the other guys can comment in, I think uh, the broad comment would be, make sure your business has a long-term strategy. Don't think in the short term. Think about the next generation, focus on the next generation's needs. And if we do that, then that forces us to collaborate on the common goals of the industry as a whole. So, you know, sustainability, if you interpret that as people, planet and profit, mm. it sort of encompasses what we're talking about. And to a large extent from me, the old values, as we call them, the, the traditional values, which basically you can sum up as do the right thing. And that's all it is, really. Um, whether that's for your investors, your customers, your employees, your supply chain or your community, you know in your heart what the right thing is. And if we as businesses do that, then we have a long term sustainable business. So get the strategy right and Tana should collaborate on the on the <clears throat> core themes for the industry. Mm -hmm. My question, my answer. But so Daniel, do you want to add to that? Just to um, add to the supply chain part of it, um, in Ethiopia's case, I mean, tannery is um, operating, you know, focusing on the processing of leather, but um, uh, strengthening the, the entire supply chain, empowering farmers and the transportation of um, hides and skins, the logistics part of it, um, as well as preservation and process, to um, promotion and marketing is very, very important. So uh, the entire supply chain, when the entire supply chain is strong, then the leather business also becomes uh, much stronger. Um, nowadays, we have challenges from synthetic hydrocarbons, you know, um, they're much more <laughs> polluting than um, natural pro products, leather. So all of that, once it's integrated, 
it becomes um, you know a, a lot more valuable and important in the leather sector. Well, I'm sure that's correct. I'm sure that if all the supply chain partners could uh, help each other and work together, it would it would yeah. make a big big difference. I'm sure you're right. Uh, Andreas, your turn. If you could only pick one innovation or development for the leather industry for the near future, what what would it be? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we have spoken about sustainability. We have spoken about supply chain. So, if I pick one innovation, I think uh, traceability is an important factor that uh, makes sure that we work with our partners in the whole supply chain and make sure that not only we as the tenants, but the slaughterhouses, the farmers, we are all living the same way um, that we expect. And the traceability is, I think, an important uh, measure that makes sure that uh, we can also confirm this to all our customers. OK, well, look, that's fabulous. And thanks very much for all the answers that you've given a really super discussion. I think we managed to cover a lot of important points and I'm very grateful to all of you, to Chris, to Andreas, to Sidenia, to John and to Reg for your excellent contributions. I uh, hope we have the chance to talk again soon and until the next time, goodbye.